Today, we talk about... All right, welcome back. This is, I think, episode 40. Pretty sure. Nope. Yeah, episode 40. Uh, another special guest, David Nguyen uh, of the Bad Asians show, Bad Asians podcast, mm-hmm. right? Anything else that you're involved with currently? Nope, just those That's it, right? things and stand-up comedy. Right. So, uh, you know, you were kind enough to have me on your podcast, the Bad Asians podcast, and um, and that was fun, man. That was, I th- that was actually my first time being on a podcast with, like, professional sounding audio, so that was cool. I uh, appreciate that. Um, so first time on somebody else's podcast? Uh, let me, th- I mean, yeah, it would have to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah, everyone else does this very professionally and now I'm taking it a lot more seriously. So we got some new toys in here. Um, but yeah, man, give us a rundown, like, uh, of your comedy come up when you started, you know, how many, you know, how long ago, where you started your influences for comedy, all that kind of stuff. Started in the Bay area about eight years ago. Okay. Um, it came about, as just something to do at night that wasn't going to bars and clubs. Right. And now I do bars and <laughs> <laughs> different kind of clubs. But in your early 20s, you want to go have fun with your friends. But after a while, it just got old for me. Yeah. And then I realized I don't really like going out to this type of an environment. I just okay. like being around my friends. Right, right, right. Um, so I looked for something else to do in high school, or not in high school, in middle school. They assigned me into an improv class, okay. which is like an elective that I was assigned to. And I was a very shy, timid kid, but all my friends were in it and we had a blast. So it was like that type of comedic performance always stuck with me. And then as I was just being a homebody, uh, I just started going out to comedy clubs, just watching stand up. I always loved stand up. And then I found a, an improv class. Okay. So I just signed up for that as something to do and you know improve my personal skills right, right. hey let's be less shy in front of people and that's then, funny that you chose improv to make you do that because i feel like if you didn't have that skill set improv would be like the scariest thing you'd want to do for me it because i had done a version of improv in middle school oh, okay it, gosh you you weren't as scared like of a, it yeah i had a positive c- attachment gotcha 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 and then from that improv it was fun but just hanging out with improv people wore on me a little bit because they never knew how to turn it off. <laughs> games and <laughs> just after another. So that would be like me doing this. Exactly. For <laughs> just... A lot of times stand-ups for... can be like that as well. Yeah. But then you can just walk away from them as opposed to like if you're part of a team, you need them. Uh, I see, I see, I see. And then in performance, I was selfish because I wanted all the spotlight for myself yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and so there was a stand-up class which there is a negative connotation when right. you take a stand-up class but i didn't know how to do stand-up and like the idea of going to a bar and just performing was terrifying scary me. yeah so i just took the class um not exactly knowing what i was getting um but and then they don't really teach you how to be funny either. I think well, that's one of the yeah. <laughs> of you know shit. <laughs> I was stand up class is oh I thought that we're gonna help me write jokes, but like after the first four courses, they just go into like the history of stand up. Oh really? There's fucking some, rip off. There is some good value to it. Listen, I, I love the history of stand up, yeah. but I'm not taking a fucking class for that. Are you serious? But well, also what they teach you is a certain stage presence, uh-huh. uh, moving the mic to the back, not having anything between you and the audience, uh, moving the stool, that stuff. But aren't these all stylistic choices? They can be, but you know? like when you see an open micer has the, the microphone and the stool kind of pro- position in front of them so as a barrier to the audience, it's uh-huh. like a little bit more noticeable. Okay. Uh, they teach you, you know, some professionalism like don't run the light so that's something that's always stuck with me it's like i i get out i just do my time yeah yeah. like i don't dare to go over you're an asshole got it got it got it it. (laughs) very respectful of the light uh teaches you not to play with the cord because that's a sign of nervousness oh i i remember doing that hardcore someone called me out like dude stop coiling the cord yeah Yeah, everybody does that yeah (laughs) Uh, and now like my like i I still have nervous takes it's like i hold the mic like this or i don't know i still don't know what to do with my hands because i'm not a very because you're related to will ferrell (laughs) yeah like i don't gesture so much okay 
Um, so there was some value to that and it's a very sheltered environment, but yeah, encouraging, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause everyone's there for the same reason you're there. Everybody's right? there for the same reason. And then after a month's time, um, uh, you get to go perform stand up in front of like a live audience, but it's a very sheltered audience. So What's, or is this not talk again? Hello. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was filming, but maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Cause that's the weirdest thing. Sorry. All right. Continue. <laughs> All good. Yeah. So you get to perform in front of a sheltered audience. It's like they know that it's kind of like your first time performing. So they're not as judgmental. Uh -huh. They're not expecting Chris Rock level. Of right, right. Right. So my first time doing it, I did three minutes. I did well enough and then I just continue to keep doing it. And then after a while, just doing it in the Bay areas, there's only like a handful of comedy clubs that you can get into and pass that. And then after that, it's like, where do you go from there? And, and this was how many, over how many years? Uh, I mean, I got passed at all the comedy clubs after about five or six years. Oh, okay. It's like just hosting and then one club let me feature. Uh, and then there were some other clubs out a little bit further. So if you're uh, familiar with the Bay Area, it's like there's San Jose and then an hour away is Oakland and San Francisco. And then if you wanna make the drive to Sacramento, that's two hours away. And one, there's another one that's kind of like 40 minutes to the side. Okay. It's called Tommy T's. Um, I never try to put as much inf effort into getting into like the, um, the other clubs. I just ma hit up the main ones in uh, San Jose and San Francisco. Just because of distance or? Distance. And then for me, it was more kind of a, um, I looked at the type of headliners who would come through certain clubs. It's like, who would I want to work with? Got it. You know? And, and so I was a little bit more judicious with my time. And after, you know, uh, six years, seven years, it's like, what am I hanging out in the Bay Area for? It's like, I can only go so far. And so I just made the move to New York. And now I've been here for a about a year got it and it's been so hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a different beast out here man um it's just a bigger beast well i think it's i think it's a also different though because and, and give me your thoughts on this mm -hmm. but as far as like the kinds of things that make people laugh here are yeah. not similar to what could make people laugh out in the bay area versus you know i'm out in iowa you know i'm sensing different sensibilities for humor out there too so. yes uh there every audience has his own sensibilities for sure even within the bay area like the same crowd in san francisco is very different than oakland than sacramento than san jose but i think generally speaking uh, funny translates, you know, if you or it should, if it's a good enough joke, yeah, yeah. if it's a good enough joke, if it's undeniable right, right. then people will laugh. And then if people like you up front, I think that goes a long way oh, for too. Sure. It's yeah. like, it's this unknown thing that causes a mental block for people. It's yeah. like, you know, you have to really just get to them. Right. But yeah, I mean, so let me clarify too, then uh, what I meant more so is like, you could, Cause like you said, it's very hard once you got to New York, but like you could have found things that you realized weren't undeniably funny or you didn't realize that until you got here. Whereas mm -hmm. out there, maybe those somewhat funnies were working. Whereas here they just nothing. No, 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 know? no. Like the, the hard part in New York is just, um, I have to start over. So I put, you know, about seven, eight years into stand up right. in the Bay area. And right. it means nothing out here. So I go out here and- Oh, I'm, in terms I'm, of like your yeah. reputation, you mean? Right, okay. so like out in the Bay Area, I was featuring at clubs and then out here, I'm back to open miking. Right. So that's the difficulty is reestablishing myself, getting to know people and then getting other comedians to trust me, to right. book me on their shows, right, right, right. getting club uh, bookers to know me, yep. see me. And then I'm competing against just everybody yeah, else who has like me, years, yeah, <laughs> who has years and years of um, just not no, not notoriety in that they're famous, but like people know them. Yeah. In terms of like, oh, I know you're familiar, right? So I trust you as opposed to like just a newcomer. Who's this like, oh, fucker yeah. from uh, the Bay Area? I don't know this guy. Exactly. So yeah. like, uh, but in terms of like just funniness, it's like no, that that um, that's not the hard part. Yeah. It's like I'm confident that I'm funny. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
don't you think then that the, cause you're right. Like the six years you put in is not going to translate in terms of reputation, but it should translate in terms of, okay, yo, I'm going to be able to establish quicker than someone who just started here sure, absolutely. versus having the six years background to be like, yeah, Hey, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. You haven't found that to be the case as um, far as like how much quicker you get booked at a show or, or do a show or whatever. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just because there's so many talented people out here right. that have relationships with other people that are on the pecking order, got you it. know, got it. So like I can go and do a show. People would think I'm funny, but like they have their friends that they got to right. take care of yep. or they have, um, business associates. They may yeah, yeah. It's like, Hey, this person can do something for me. Right. Why would I put up this Bay area guy who's funny? And I like him, but I don't know him and I don't yeah. owe him anything. So uh, let me get your take on this then. Um, because one thing I'm realizing about this place more so than any other place is the number of shows, comedy shows that are put on. Right. And um, like not like people are not only hosting open mics, but they're like hosting actual sh or, you know, putting showcases. together show shows, not even showcases, just like, hey, uh, come to my Lost Dog comedy show every, you know, every second Tuesday of every month yeah. or something like that. It's just like and and there's like eight of them a day all mm -hmm. over. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And I don't notice that with Iowa. I don't know how that was in, no, in, the, Bay Area, in the Bay Area. It, you know, has a good scene. You know, there's at least two or three shows going on every night. Really? Okay. Are but solid. are they only at the particular clubs that you guys have? No, like they're everywhere. Oh, really? Okay. So like, like bars, restaurants, yeah, all that kind correct. of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Like okay. what's great about New York is you guys have um, space. Like it's, it's ironic because New York is known for not having space, right. but like you guys do actually have like these art spaces. I was going to say, there's a ton of, <laughs> there's a ton of like uh, performance spaces yeah, and stages. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, the, the real estate is at a premium, but there are plentiful of performance spaces. So everywhere I go, cause I'm looking to start a show of my own. Right. I was going to say, um, yeah. cause you know, Hey, I'm, I'm not getting past at so-and-so yeah. place and they already have these reputation. I'm just like, why don't you just start your own show? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's what, uh, I want to do so that you have something to offer. People. Right. 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 Actually, I've, I've heard that too, where people are like, Hey, you know, sometimes people will just start a show just so they can book, get booked on someone else's show. Exactly. Just like, uh, you yeah. Know. You know, you have to have like some kind of capital. Like if you don't have, um, name recognition, you need to have like a show to trade because, you know, otherwise people are only so nice. Like yeah. People are definitely <laughs> like good, like uh, New Yorkers I find to be very nice. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's like this reputation, like they're hard or whatever. It's like, no. Uh, just at the open mics. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, like they're just uninterested yeah. at open mics. Well, yeah, because think about it. If you're going to like three shows a, a night is yeah. cool, but like, how about 3000 yeah. a night here? You know, it's like, at some point you just burn out. You're like, dude, I've heard this version of this joke. I've heard blah, blah, blah. It's just like, you really got to wow me. Well, the open know? mic is the grind in the most pure sense of the word because yep. you're waiting an hour and a half to do three minutes yep. out here. And you don't even know when you're going up. Uh, in the Bay area, we don't have the bucket system, the, the lottery system is to sign up. So you get there, you sign up and you go. So you know when you're going up as opposed to- And how lottery. many people uh, per sign up? Maybe like 30 to 40. 30? Okay. You know, so it's like, it's not too different from what goes on out here. Gotcha. But with the lottery system, yes, there, it, it seems more fair, but then you're open to the paranoia that it might be rigged right. in, for in, in somebody's favor, but it's fine, you know? It's like, this is New York system. Uh, I don't know why it's like this, um, but I'm not here to criticize it. It's just different. Right. So at least when it's a sign up, and some places do out here have sign ups, you know when you're going up, you know when to like not pay attention, yeah, yeah. when to be well, in the room and then leave. I mean, I could debate the pros and cons of the, the yeah. sign up sheet too. Cause like, for example, I can't tell you how many times I'll get to a spot and granted part, a lot of this has to do with me being new too. And yeah, like yeah. not knowing which mics operate with, in which ways, yeah. which ones have a cutoff at 20, yeah. which ones haven't updated their freaking free mics.com yeah. post in years. Yeah. So like I'll show up for a sign up and it's like, uh, yeah, we go in order and yeah. you're, 20th yeah. of 22. I'm like, oh, yeah. God damn it. You know what I mean? So, right. But like, if you know, you're going 
20th of 22, you can like leave. Get yeah. But back. so, so another con I would say to that. So the pro is, yeah, you can leave and like, you know, not pay attention or whatever. But then the con is the person that's going third, fourth, fifth, yeah. like you're not paying attention. So right. I kind of want you to pay attention, but you know, ultimately, like you said, funny is transcendent. So if you can establish yourself as like a funny person, then people will want to stick around to right. see you. Cause I, I know comics like that, that I routinely see at open mics where I'm like, yo, I really want to catch his act. I think yeah. he's a funny guy. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a good fix, man. No, nobody. <laughs> this is just... Uh, it's just there, what it no, is. There's no other way around it. It's yeah. like he, the both systems are flawed, but there's just no other way around it because right. it's not like um, music where you can practice alone in your room right, until right, you right. have something to show up to and it's good and you just have to yeah, do man. this. I get so jealous of musicians. The more I do comedy, the more I get jealous of musicians. I'm or like, any other artist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anybody but us, uh, yeah. we suck, yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I don't have a good fix. But speaking of fixes, I guess, great segue. Uh, bring me back to your Bad Asian show. So is yeah. this what you want to set up here or are you looking to do a totally different thing or what's, what's your... Um, I would like to set up... Um, Cause we do a bad Asian show in the Bay area. Right. So it's, do you travel with that show here? Uh, I tried to bring it out here and we had mixed, it was mixed results. How so? So the first two shows, not as many. Yeah. It's just in terms of people coming right. out. Yeah. Sorry. I need every excuse to use <laughs> yeah. these buttons. I paid a lot for these. Yeah. You invested so. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we got to use all eight buttons. <laughs> Within the hour, we got to use these. Yeah. But no, it's so as far as like attendance, you mean, right? Yeah. Attendance. So there's just a lot going on. It was on a Sunday night, which I just learned was not the best night for stand up. But why is that? Any particular uh, I have reason? No idea. You don't know. That's okay. just what I was told. Gotcha. <laughs> it's like it's one of those things. Probably because everyone's been sick of doing mics Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and now it's Sunday. Oh no! <laughs> so just in terms of uh, attendees, it's like yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what, oh okay. Like in terms of like regular audience. Yeah, like yeah. I don't have any problem booking comedians. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. No, no, I, I knew that's yeah. not what you meant, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm considering myself as like a fan of comedy first, where uh -huh. it's like I'm if I'm not doing this or doing an open mic like i'm going to shows you know like yeah. routinely so um i could see a world where i would get sick of it by sunday right. but yeah no i mean for a routine audience you know maybe it's more of a branding thing i don't know it could be that you know uh again there's just there's a saturation of things to do in new york right right so in the bay area it was doing really well and then i brought it out here and the first two shows did pretty good and then the third show no one showed up and then the fourth show, we had people come out and that's really good. And then the fifth show, no one showed up. How often were you doing this? Like once a month? Like a month once a month, okay. yeah. And there were some other things where we were at a venue that wouldn't let us promote on certain what? websites because they had their own ticketing system and they wanted us to uh, do okay. that, but no one knew what that ticketing system was. So we just felt handcuffed and we're like, you know what? I feel like we can just go somewhere else and the venue would be a little bit more supportive. Okay. So we decided to uh, put it on hiatus until we can find another place. Gotcha. But yeah, the batting show, the way it works is, I mean, first off, it's just the name. Uh, it's just me and another comic and we're Asian. Imran the G. Imran the G, yeah. who is in the Bay Area, but out cool here guy. is, um, his name is Joseph Annalyn. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a whole different guy? Yeah, it's a whole different oh, guy. Gotcha, Emron okay. is still. Uh, I thought you meant Emron changes his name when he comes out. <laughs> That'd be. He would, though. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he can get on, like, he will do anything yeah, <laughs> to Jesus. get on. That's. I, I was going to say, is like, was there a strategy here? Well, first off, Emron yeah. the G is not even his real name. Right, right. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, what I was saying. It's like, oh, so yeah, he's Emron the G at a the stage Bay. Name. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was assuming he would just uh, travel with you, I guess, but. Um, mm, no. Um, with the show's not doing that well. We okay, get yeah. to fly each other got it, got it. So what, um, uh, you were saying there, there was a saturation of things to do here, obviously, but yeah. there is up there too. And there's a ton of Asians up there too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, there is, there's a market for it. It's just, we, we haven't been able to market it pr properly. Got it. Um, but, and that's what we're figuring out out here. That's the hard part too. Yeah, no, I, that's what I've heard from other comedians I've had on who host shows. Uh, they, they say the same thing. They're like, dude, just getting promotion and getting people to come is like yeah. the hardest part. Like, I mean, comedy is so ridiculous. It's like, we already have to focus on being a good comedian and yeah. now we have to be a world-class 
promoter right, right. on top of that. Yeah, I don't know about world class. It's just like, because I've, I've talked to comedians about this too. It's just like, I don't know that people post enough. Mm -hmm. Like people just, or, or, or the comics I meet who just refuse to have Instagram. I'm like, yeah. bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what's, 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 what's wrong with you? Yeah. you know? uh, but that's just my opinion on it. I've heard the opposite end of it where people are like, Hey, no, it's just, I don't feel like a whore. I don't want to like cheapen myself. I don't like, and, or like a lot of the self deprecation, like, yeah. Oh, I, I hate myself. So it's hard for me to just like put myself out there. So I get all that. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, if this is what needs to be done for you to make it happen, then oh, why aren't definitely. you doing it? You like know? we've had conversation about this previously where it's just that, uh, fear of just putting yourself out there. Right. That's what I think is at the heart of it. It's like yep. people who say, Oh, I don't want to cheapen myself or be a whore. It's like you, you probably feel that way because you don't know what to offer Instagram right. or people who are on Instagram because you see what's popular and it's like, Oh, I don't want to be like that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't know how to present yourself as someone that right. people want to. Yeah, no, about. exactly. And I, my opinion on that is like, I think people may just be overthinking it or maybe I've just thought of it sublimely to a level where I just like, I'm, I'm doing it subconsciously now. I don't know, but I just feel like personally, I don't, I don't follow any of the trends mm -hmm. all that closely where mm -hmm. I'm just like, Oh man, they're doing it this way. And this is getting 8,000 likes. So yeah. I gotta do stuff like that. I've never thought that yeah. way. Cause I'm partially for what you said, where it's just like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But also it's just like, that's not me. Right. So I'm right. not going to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not so, like Dr. Souls destroys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hey, I would love to do that. I kind of did that in my hundredth show, which, <laughs> which felt kind of good. Um, and small world. Cause I did it in my hometown. Uh huh. And small world, I talked to the guy after the show. He's like, because he looked very familiar. I'm like, who is this guy? And I find out he's like the brother of a guy I went to school with yeah. who's now in medical school and yeah. stuff. It's just crazy. Uh, he's actually a nice guy. But yeah, I kind of picked on him during the show, which was fun. Um, but no, so man, let me let me ask you. Well, no, social media is important. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> let me ask you though. So what's the struggle with, or if struggle is the right word, like what's the hurdle with like just putting whatever you want to put out there oh i think i'm a very boring person outside of stand-up i mean i think uh, so too but oh you think i'm boring no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how dare yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> no i um i meant like i consider myself boring too uh, but i think this was another one of those mental hurdles i i i came over which was you know what i'm just gonna post whatever i'm into and then I'm betting that because of the numbers game of mm -hmm. social media, eventually someone's going to follow me. Yeah. Cause I'm sure you've seen it too, where like you see something popping off and you're like, why is this popping off? It makes yeah. no sense to me. Yeah. I've, I've kind of like reverse engineered that to be like, Hey, so people are putting out things that I'm not even into mm -hmm. and it's like taking off like crazy. Yeah. Why don't I put what I'm into and maybe there'll be a bunch of people into that. Okay. You know what I mean? And then playing the numbers game of like, okay, if I post every day, if I post every day, if I post every day over time, eventually you know, you gain an audience. Right. So. All right. I will try posting every day. <laughs> what, what day is today? The today's the 20th, the 20th. Okay. The 20th. Starting the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> I will post for 30 days straight and let, let's see what well, that that's, 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 here's the thing man. I'm not saying I have all the keys cause like I'm, I'm not sitting, well, I mean, I'm sitting pretty but it's, <laughs> you uh, have a lot of keys, yeah. <laughs> but none of this came from social media is right. what I'm saying. So, uh, granted my social media is doing pretty good for what I would think as a boring person. I'm like, yeah. Holy shit, I'm doing pretty good. You know, is um, there a flex button, you know, shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, what would be the flex button? Maybe this one. Damn son. Where'd you find this? <laughs> I would, I would qualify that one. Um, Let's see. Yeah, no. That, oh man, that's my one drawback with this. I want like 20 of these. Okay. Not eight, but yeah. but you can customize them, but I would have to just be sitting here and doing that. But anyway, um, no, I, I I don't think posting every day is the right move okay. for most people, but for some people it is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I post like eight times a day. Like I don't give a shit, man. Um, and other for other people, it's just like, nah, as long as they post like once, I, I almost not almost, I definitely understand the value of posting like maybe just once a week, if yeah. not once a month, because yeah. like if you, for sure, at least once a week, <laughs> right? Cause if, if you at least put additional thought into your mm -hmm. posts, then they're going to be that much more valuable to your audience. Mm -hmm. Granted, if they're a small audience and it may not matter as much, this applies more to people that are like doing fairly well as far as the numbers go. Mm -hmm. Cause then if someone hasn't posted in a while, 
I'll be more intrigued to see what they post. I'm like, holy shit, this guy hasn't posted in a month, and then all of a sudden he posted this. There's got to be something to this, you know. So I'll pay more attention to whatever that is. Um, well, I mean, I don't. I'm not dismissing the um, the usefulness of posting every day. I 100 percent uh, agree. I want to post every day. It's just I don't think. I have the content to post every day because right. I have a pretty routine life, you know, like there's a reason why people post a lot of pictures of their kids and their dogs and it's <laughs> because that's what their, right. their life yeah. is. No. But that's probably 100% relatable to everybody because yeah. Yeah, of course. everybody has a dog, a kid, or they eat. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this would. Yeah. And I mean, you're seeing things. other people doing it yeah. and they're clearly gaining an audience from yeah. that. And maybe it's a slow burn. Maybe it's a quick one or whatever. But like, if, if that's what's going on in your life, that's what's going on in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And ultimately who do you want at your shows yeah. and who do you want as your audience members? The kinds of people that want to see the kinds of things you're posting, yeah. even if it's routine to you, yeah. you know, like, I feel like that's how you find your audience. Cause like, okay, would I rather have so-and-so famous YouTubers audience who gives no shits about me? Like if he handed me, he or she handed me their channel tomorrow. Yeah is it really going to be that valuable for me? Cause like now all of a sudden I feel like a, I have to live up to the standard that that person had yeah, building yeah. that audience. B I either have to be very similar to their styles of whatever they're into. And all those factors are going to make me someone I'm not, or people are going to recognize that I'm not being someone I'm, mm -hmm. or I'm not being genuine. And then they'll just like drift off. So ultimately what you want is like, who finds what you find interesting yeah. to, you know, build your following. And maybe that's only going to be like eight people, but, I'll eight's better than zero, yeah, right? I'll you take know? eight. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously hashtags are, are a big function of that. So you got to use them. Um, uh, see, that's another thing. I'm terrible at remembering hashtags. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I, I put so much effort into putting the caption. together like the caption and then I said, oh, I should have hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been a uh, very key. Uh, Oh, man, I got to get faster at these. Once I get my muscle memory uh, better at uh, which one's which, I'm going to gonna know what to do yeah. here. But no, man, the hashtags are the first thing I put in, actually. I think of the caption after. God damn it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so much wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> and actually what I do is uh, to e save even more time, I use um, what's called a hash, hash expert, I think it's called. It's an app. God damn or it. hashtag expert. <laughs> yeah, you literally just put in one word. So like it's a picture of a dog, yeah. put in dog and it'll spit out. Cause you can use a max of 30 hashtags. It'll spit out 30 hashtags related to dogs. But to be honest, some of them have nothing to do with dog. They'll say like art, love yeah. photography. I'm just like, all right, whatever. Um, but the, 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 at least there's a tag there. So like someone may discover it and someone may happen upon it. And again, playing the numbers game, it's like someone's going to click on this. So, and if you do it enough, let alone every day, you're going to build a following. It's See, not a, See, like, I have to be a good comedian and a promoter <laughs> and a social media uh, strategist. Yeah, but see this, like you're, it's so funny you, you describe it that way because I'm just talking like someone who just did it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm, I'm not an exactly. expert. I'm not yeah. a social media guru. I'm yeah. not, you know, I'm not Gary Vee. I'm not like anything special. I just, I was like, oh, this is just what I need to do. So I'm doing it. But you're, I feel like you're looking at it like, oh man, I got to do all this like crazy Wait, it, stuff. It, it, it's, it's not that. It's one of those things where like we've all seen jokes that were right in front of our faces, but like this comedian was able to put it together yeah, yeah. and you're like, God damn it. I wish I thought of that. Like it was right there for <laughs> right, me to have. Right, right, right. It's just that. Gotcha. It's gotcha, like, gotcha. I knew all this information, but like having it just spoken out loud, you're like, and you know, my, like I've had people tell me, so like, you should do this. You should hashtags, but to, for you to, to just say it, it present it the way you did is like, God damn it. You're right. Well, cause I'm on the spectrum. So like I talk very detailed, you know what I mean? So it's uh what kind of spectrum <laughs> with the autistic spectrum. Oh, are you? No, I think so. Okay. I don't have proof. Okay. I haven't like sat down to like do all the checklists on the, on the diagnosis sheet. How or accurate is that by the way? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, that's how little I've looked into this, <laughs> okay. but I just, I'm pretty sure I'm on the spectrum. Like it's, I've gotta be, and you don't know me very well. So like, you're probably like, huh, I don't know. But like, if you talk to any of my closest friends, they'll mm -hmm. be like, yeah, he's definitely like, yeah. <laughs> that's you know? fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. Mental health is one of those things where I'm very, um, I acknowledge that it exists. I, think it's great that people are confronting what is uh, inside their heads, but also at the same time, it's like everybody can't be going through this, you know? Uh, well, it depends on the thing, yeah. but also what something I appreciate about uh, getting through um, this section of medical school mm -hmm. was like when, when the psychology section came up, yeah. literally every diagnosis we would study, yeah. 
at least five people within yeah. the within the class would be like, yo, I got that. You okay. know what I mean? So <laughs> so eventually what, what I'm putting together, and again, this is not scientific at all. This is just me thinking. Right. I think there, it's just that we're all technically on some spectrum mentally, right. and we have little bits and pieces of each thing. So yeah. if you have enough bits and pieces of schizophrenia, yeah. then you're fucking schizophrenic. Right. But you may have one component of it that's not debilitating right. as far as like a mental health yeah. issue or mental, mental disability, yeah. but you still have that little quirk. So we all have these little mental quirks. Mm -hmm. And so when you're like, oh, everyone can't have this, they may not have it. A, they may not have it to the level that you have. Like you may have a way bigger chunk of it than someone else does, mm -hmm. but they may still have some, yeah. you know what I mean? That's, I, I think that's, that's how I pictured in my head. And I'm sure there's a very, uh, savantish uh, psychologist who can yeah. probably describe this a lot better but in my head this is just how i picture we're just like we all have these little idiosyncrasies sure, sure. that kind of well, i phrased it poorly <laughs> i'll say okay. that it's uh maybe in a more macro sense i think uh with mental health and the way people are treating it and diagnosing it mm -hmm. i think we're it's still at the stage where maybe um, copernicus was okay. and he started figuring shit out and we're just not uh, I see, like, evolved we're still enough thinking here that the, uh, where things like the diagnosis are more precise because now people are still like uh, have suspicions like do I medicate or do I not medicate? Right. Do I go to talk it out? How effective is that? Right, like, right, I need right. a, the right person to talk it out to. Yeah, yeah. See, so it's all up in the air. I'm glad you said that because my thoughts with this whole therapist movement and yo, go see a therapist, go see a therapist, go see a therapist. I'm, uh, I think it's a good move, but I think it's only a good move because I feel like most people are fucking lonely. I feel like most people don't have someone they can just talk to who will listen because mm -hmm. our time is fucking valuable. Yeah. I got Instagram to swipe, bro. Yeah. Like I don't have time to listen to your problems, but you need someone to give you time to listen to your problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or your, what you're anxious about or whatever the issue is. Like you need someone to like talk to. And I guess if you're married, that, that should be something, but then maybe there's some guy issues you want to discuss that you can't discuss with your girlfriend or your wife, or there's, you know, issues with your kids that you can't discuss with your kids. You can't be like, Hey kids, this is what's bothering me about you guys. You know? So I understand the role of a therapist, I think it's honestly just to have someone who's like a hired friend, basically, mm -hmm. but like a hired professional friend, like, mm -hmm. yo, you're hiring me to actually listen to you, mm -hmm. not you're hiring me to sit across you from, mm -hmm. to sit across from you at dinner and just like be on your phone while I'm on my phone. And you know what I mean? Like, it's I think like it's reverse like, stand up, reverse stand up, explain. It's like uh, they pay to listen to you. Okay. <laughs> Dude, maybe that's how you fill the uh, Bad Asian show. You just hire a bunch of therapists to show up. <laughs> oh, man, that might be a little expensive, though. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I really think that's what it is. And then the Medicaid thing, I think it, it comes down to just shortcuts. Like, people are just looking for a shortcut. Same thing with, like, everyone wants a diet pill. Everyone wants just a pill. Like, no... Uh, while I just discussed why I think therapists are quote important, I also realized why people may not want to even spend the time to go see a therapist, even though it may be more helpful than the pill because mm -hmm. the pill pop it and you're gone. Right. Um, well not gone, but like, you know, you're done. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's the crux of it. But again, I'm not a freaking you know, psychologist specialist or whatever. But Neither am I. Yeah, <laughs> We're just two comedians. Just dope. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's the one I wanted. Yeah, these don't fit perfectly. I'm going to have to label adjust these. So they came with like a sticker card. Okay. And I have, look, on my screen, I have the, uh, the layout it? of which one's which. But I'm just, it has to be more muscle memory. I have to like know which yeah. one's where. Or maybe I just limit myself to two. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but, uh, oh, you know what I should have used when I said people don't have time for the therapist. Ain't nobody got time for that. That would have been the appropriate <laughs> one. I didn't use the right one. Damn it. Okay. So, so yeah, man, I think, I think, um, like y y what you were describing as far as like, Oh, having you, you know, describe it, you know, makes a lot more sense uh, hearing out loud. I think uh, a lot of it also comes back to how I process information in the first place in terms of also how I deliver it. What I mean is, uh, like, when I'm asking guys in middle school or high school that tell me that they went out on a date with a girl mm -hmm. for the first time, 
my mind is like running at a thousand miles asking them like 8 billion questions like, Oh, so, you know, how did you get her to say yes? So did you bring her flowers? Did you, you know, um, uh, did you wear a certain shirt? Did you wear a certain cologne? Did you like, I'm going through all these dumb questions, but like, there's still questions that I'm trying to check yes, no's to. Mm-hmm. And then, but the response I always get routinely from people is just, dude, it just happened. You know, yeah. just, you know, one thing led to another and it just happened. I'm like, bro, you're doctor, <laughs> you're used to people filling out medical questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, but like, that's just how my mind is wired. It's like, I need solid examples. I need concrete evidence. I need, I need a, a template. I need, um, uh, a recipe book. I can't just be like, yeah, dude, just be present in the moment. It'll happen, bro. You just gotta like, it doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. But then when I get angry at people for be like, no, I need more than that, bro. You can't just leave it at that. Like there's just, clearly you did some stuff mm-hmm. and I need you to recount for me the same way I'm recounting for you. Like my social media strategy, yeah. like that's what I need from people. And I just never get it. Cause they, cause they don't think about it the same way I do it. Hence right. why now I think I'm on the spectrum. I think that's my, no, I think you're just lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you have no, want to talk to you the way like you have no one to communicate to you the way it makes sense for you um i don't know that that makes me lonely because that would mean because i i hang out with people and i have a good time with them Mm -hmm. but in specific circumstances where i'm trying to communicate a certain idea Mm -hmm. in those situations it's just annoying i think yeah you know but i'm lonely yeah uh, I don't know. I have to, I have to think about that because I'm not lonely when I'm hanging out with a group of friends and we're not, we're just having a good time, mm-hmm. you know, cause then, then I don't need that, that part of my yeah. brain. You know what I mean? Um, or when I am talking to someone, at least when I'm talking to them and, and actually communicating, like we just talked about the whole social media thing. Mm-hmm. Like you clearly understood everything I said, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's not that I misunderstood. It's just like, I don't get it back. So I just get pissed off you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but imagine if you had someone who understood yeah it'd be dope would be. but I, I just the fact that i don't have that i don't know that i'm lonely as a result but i, I think okay i think i understand now why you say lonely yeah. like okay in that aspect yeah in that sure. in in regards to like you have no one for that specific part well you, you know what i should say no one i mean i've met other people that can do that okay, um, other <laughs> other spectrum people you know yeah uh, or at least people i assume are on the spectrum but um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, I wish that was like a routine thing for mm-hmm. all human beings is like, we all think like robots and spit mm-hmm. out shit like robots. That's how I wish things were, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Selfishly speaking. But anyway, uh, I wish you luck on your social media. <laughs> <laughs> I wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I really think it's that simple. I think it's just like, um, and get this, like I, there's other comedians that I follow. Yeah. The stuff that they're posting, I don't really care for that much, yeah. but that's okay. I'm yeah. okay with it. I'm glad. I'm just glad that they're posting what they enjoy and then right. they're drawn in there because we're all going to have different followings like yeah. the bad asian show is not my audience you know what i mean mm-hmm. maybe there's a little bit of overlap and, mm-hmm. and vice versa like the sneaker crowd and you know you're into sneakers so like there's going to be some overlaps in certain things but like your pure audience is not mine and mm-hmm. vice versa or schultz's or fucking you know anyone else that we know or imran's or or alan or whoever is the suit on it who was the other guy who? oh joseph joseph sorry <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo so you're not white Tell me if this is a thing or if I'm just recently starting to have this happen to me. Okay. In the past, like three, four years, mm-hmm. you know how people would, you know how white people would always be like, oh, every non white person looks the same or like mm-hmm. seem the same. I've started to feel that way about white people and white names specifically. Like the minute your name is like an Alan, Jeff, David, or, you know, like yeah. a white David, um, like I, I just, I've already zoned out and I've already forgotten who sure. you are or what your name Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Shelby, you know. I don't know. Do you, do you, do you notice this? No. Um, yes, but with everybody, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, exclusive to white people. Uh, I'll confuse Asian people. I'll confuse black people. Okay. It's just more racist <laughs> when you do it with, to a group that's been marginalized. Well, okay. So, well, I mean, are you, is this happening when you're meeting them in a group? Cause I think it's, it's different when like you, when you walk into like a entire, um, uh, crowd of, of, uh, white people versus mm-hmm. like an entire crowd of white people with one black guy. I'll remember that black guy. Sure. You know, but you're saying regardless, like it just across the board, you can't remember. Yeah. I think I'm just uh, a poor, uh, guest at a party. <laughs> okay. It's like, what's your name? And I don't even know if I remember your face. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. You know, that was kind of an awkward moment for me. Uh, I went to one of these local, um, uh, bars that does a comedy show. Uh-huh. Uh, I forget how often, but I, uh, I see them posted on Instagram. So I go yeah. and, uh, and it's literally like just up the road from me. So I'm like, Oh, this is convenient. 
and they actually get some good comics in there. So, um, so I, the last time I went actually, uh, the, the showrunner came up to me cause I have a very recognizable face Oh, okay. and this guy didn't. So yeah. I'm just like, oh man, uh, feel bad, but I don't remember us meeting, you know what I mean? Like, so, so that definitely happens to me too. But, uh, but to me, I think I find it way more with white people. I don't know why. And just lately, usually I'm very good with names. Usually I'm very good with faces. Uh, but I will say in the comedy scene, uh, a lot of, hmm, how do I phrase this? Okay. I'll, I'll phrase it first with my own experience being confused with other people. Okay. So in the Bay area, there's only like a handful of Asian comedians and I've gotten confused for every single one of okay. the uh, guy <laughs> comedians. Um, so I understand that part because there, uh, in the Bay area, there was a period where it's just a lot of, uh, dorky white comedians who talk about how they're losers Interesting, and they all kind of bleed into each other. Right. Whereas like, I forget their sets or it's like, I remember the joke, but I, I forget who said it because yeah, yeah. they're all kind of, uh. You know, they're just yeah. all talking about. No, the I, thing. honestly, that happens to me with most comics here because they, yeah. like you said, they all have very similar content, and yeah. I'm just like, dude, this, I've heard this, of, or at least a version of this, right. like eight times today. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, even the professionals, like I'll go to the comedy cellar, yeah. and I'll be like, dude, that guy was hilarious, yeah. but I can't remember a single joke. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so you know, a lot of times people can, uh, like personalities can bleed together. So faces, I think, and names, names are probably the hardest to remember because you know, like how many like David's do you know? And then you have to assign that with the face. You yeah, just met. true, true, you're like, true. You're not my David. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to assign you that. So it's one of those organizational things, Yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I confuse faces all the time. Uh, I think, uh, um, a lot of times people can, you know, be confused for another person. So it happens. Yeah. Uh, but for me, uh, maybe it's just, uh, I don't hang out with too many white people, like big groups uh, of white people all the time. So I'll, I'll confuse other faces, but I don't know. Like for me, it's just not exclusively. Told yeah, huh? That's fair. That's but fair. I'll make a more effort to <laughs> confuse them. Social media, less confusion <laughs> yeah. checklist. Got it. We're, we're making improvements today. Got it. All right. Um, let's see. So what else I want to ask you today, man? There wasn't too much. Um, cause, uh, yeah, this, this, the bad agents thing is really what I wanted to explore most. Um, cause how long have you been doing the podcast? The podcast has been going on for three years, three years. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. That's yeah. impressive. And now we're, we're just starting to get better. I think. Why is that? Uh, just in terms of, um, more listeners. Oh, okay. I, I think, uh, Previously, we hit a wall, and then I think being out in New York and connecting with a lot of different um, creative people and having more guests and having the studio access has helped us out a lot. So, what were you doing before the studio? It's just in my room. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's pretty much like this, but l way less expensive. Got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> uh, and it was just uh, primarily me and Emron talking to each other. But right. then once we incorporate guests, um, that helped a lot. In terms of what you think? I think, uh, first off, is guests who aren't comedians because comedians, again, we're not good promoters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> self promotion. And then because we're not good self promoters, we're not going to promote other comedians because it's like, hey, why would I promote this person when I can't even promote myself? Oh, you know what? That's a great point. I never even thought of it that way because if you suck at promoting, then why, yeah, why would you ever promote another comic? Like, yeah, uh, anecdotal evidence is uh, I used to try to, to produce this show at, in the Bay Area at a comic book store that had a event space, and they would have bands come in all the time, and the bands are really good at just promoting amongst their own social media. So, like, bands would like, hey, come out, check, like, I'm performing with this band, you should go check us out. And then when I booked my show with comedians, the booker, like, got mad at me. He was like, hey, I noticed that these other comedians aren't really promoting the show. Hmm. But it's like, bands have how many performances a month where comedians is like, we're performing every night. You're not going to promote, like, a Thursday show when you have... Uh you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to promote as well. Yeah. But I, yeah, I also understand the booker's point of view, which is like, of dude, course. Yeah. fill the fucking seats, man. Yeah. Put your fucking name out there. Exactly. Go whore yourself out. No. Right. Yeah. So but I totally like, get that. As a comedian, I'm not going to go step on people right. like other comedians next because there's politics behind us. Like if I'm being pushy with them, but I'm not promoting their show. Either, yeah. Right. 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 And 
there's an impasse. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting you bring that up. Cause I, I never even like, if, if you came up to me and you're like, yo, I need you to you know, mm-hmm. push this on your social. I'd be, oh yeah, done. Yeah. You know, cause I'm, I'm just like, I've already hoard myself right. out to the point where like, I just yeah. don't care anymore. So, yeah. um, but yeah, if, if you have, if you have that crew, that's like not feeling it, it's yeah. going to be a tough. So I mean, even amongst like, uh, our podcast, like sometimes Amron will, uh, post the show and then I forget to post it and then vice versa. I'll post the show and I have to remind Amron, Hey, you got to promote the episode that we just put up. And why, why do you think you forget or is it forgetfulness or what is it you think? I think it's just like, Oh, he posted it. So that's enough. Oh, okay. 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 So <laughs> yeah, let's not overdo it. To yeah, the yeah, fans, it's like, we know? have the same base. Yeah. It's like, no, it's like, yeah, I, I can tell you one more thing that may actually help you get over that hurdle. So I obviously post a lot of content, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, whatever, yeah. especially YouTube. Right. What I noticed over time with YouTube is like, dude, no one's watching everything. Yeah. Like you think they are and you see your numbers are going up, yeah. but no one's like, you have to remind, remind yourself like, dude, you put your heart and soul into putting out these few minutes mm-hmm. and people aren't even watching the entire right. thing. Like this is your baby, but mm-hmm. like no one gives a flying yeah. fuck and just, you got to just accept that. And that may cripple you where you're like, oh, well I'm boring anyway. So why would I pose? No one's even going to stick around even if I made it interesting, mm-hmm. but I would, I would uh, approach it differently. I would be like, yo, most of these people don't even remember that I already talked about this like eight times. Yeah. So I'm just going to mention it the ninth time. Right. So, and then again, like Imran and you clearly have a dual audience, but like each of you individually also has a, a subset of yeah. audience that is not going to hear what Imran said and, and yeah. vice versa. So like, and honestly, what, if, if you had to promote every show, I totally understand what you're saying. Like, dude, I'm up every night. I'm not going to promote every fuck. But I all, I've, I've gotten to the point where I realize, like, nah, I kind of think I have to promote every show. Oh, most definitely. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm an advocate of promoting every show. Yeah. Uh, and th- but I say that all that to circle back and having guests who aren't comedians help out a lot. Oh, for sure. They're not um, as miserable jaded. comics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they're like, hey, I just did this fun podcast. It's like, you know, how many podcasts do we do? Right. So many. I think <laughs> also like, for them, it's like, oh, I. I did something outside of my normal everyday thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think on top of that too, the non-comedians, I feel like comedians just inherently have like a cynic gene or like a self-criticism, self-deprecation gene yes. to them where yeah. we're just like, nah, we ain't shit. I present it like know? this. In improv, there's a rule and you say yes and. Right. Stand-ups are the opposite. We say no. Right. <laughs> because. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's honestly, that's, that's definitely what I've noticed. And it's just like, it's just like this harsh, err, you know, like, uh, I mean, I agree with you. Comics in general are very nice people, but as far as just like that self-deprecation, self, like lack of self-worth, I have it too. Um, yeah, so like, that's one thing that I've tried to move away from in stand-up, like, um, you know, Anthony Jeselnik? Yeah. Yeah. So I got to open for him once. Oh, no right? shit. And he was very nice. Uh, he sat down and just let me kind of just uh, berate him with just comedy questions. You know? <laughs> because uh, to circle back, it's like uh, he was one of like my guys when I was starting up comedy. Uh, um, starting comedy. It's like, oh shit, I want to be like that guy. Right, 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 right. So to open for him was like, you know, a big kind of... Um, Right of passage. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah right of passage. And for him to think I'm funny also was like one of those uh, validation things. Right, like, right, oh, right. I'm funny now. Oh, that's a big deal. Like, yeah. yeah, this guy who uh, I idolize thinks I'm funny. It's like, okay, I, I don't have to worry about being funny so much anymore. But one of the things he does is in terms of uh, explaining his persona is that he said he doesn't like being laughed at. So why would he tell jokes about like self-deprecation? It's like, you know, it's with his He style. doesn't like being laughed at? Yeah, like his style isn't like there's little to zero self-deprecation. Right, right. It's all uh, very, you know, braggadocious. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's the right word. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not the butt of his jokes. Right. Because he's like, you know, in, like in the grand scheme of things, like I don't really like being laughed at. And then I realized, you know, what? I don't like being <laughs> laughed at either. So I try to present myself or, or my comedies like I don't self-deprecate gotcha, too much. Gotcha, gotcha, It's the sprinkling of here and there to get people to, you know, I think once you self-deprecate, you, there's a little bit of vulnerability in that yep, and then yep. the audience appreciates that. Right. In the grand scheme of things, I think there's other ways to go about it, but with a lot of comedians, and then I, I noticed this a lot in the Bay Area where it's like, you know, I'm a platted loser, I can't get dates. And it's like, I don't, 
I don't really relate to that. Yeah, yeah right. So, yeah, not only that, but like at some point it just gets old because it, it's like, bro, like it, I've heard, have you not yourself heard this act it, like a number of times it, already? So, oh, and yeah. then, I mean, it could just be one of those things that cycles is like you present yourself as this, you know, lovable loser and then people laugh at that. And so that's your kind of uh, like acknowledgement. A, so it's like, oh, if I continue to be like a positive a loser, feedback loop, yeah, yeah. then, you know, this is just enabling right. this. A uh, thing that doesn't really make you happy, right? Well, I, I think it's just like an easy tool. It's like it's easy yeah. to just get up there and say I'm fat. Like yeah. it's that's funny, like yeah. and great, but yeah. like it's also not very creative. Uh, but it is a easy tool, and I feel like a lot of stand ups start there because it's it's an easy tool. Like where 100%. else are you going to start? You're yeah. going to start. I mean, with that's an easy where tool. I started too. It's yeah. Like, uh, and then you get those aws, and then you're like, Why are you guys? <laughs> why are you guys on? I'm joking. Because like, what you said was profoundly sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that one's that one's winning is the most popular yeah, button yeah. today. Um, yeah, man, no, I, I totally agree. It's uh, but also, I mean, I always have to remind myself too is like most open micers will remain open micers and or just uh, you know die out like they they just won't move on to mm -hmm. the next step. You know, yeah. and not everyone becomes like a let alone world renowned comic, but just like a touring comic. It's a very and, small percentage. Yeah, very small percentage. So <clears throat> I always have to remind myself of that too, especially when I'm doing such a mind fuck going. And I'm, I'm sure you go you know, to shows back in the Bay Area and then uh, you come back here and it's just like the mind fuck of like performing for the two varieties of audiences. Well, just I mentally prepare myself. It's like moving out to New York has been a thing I've always wanted to do. Right. In term, from like just when I committed to doing stand up. And I learned that you go to LA to become famous or you go to New York to be good at stand up. And it's like, I want to be good at stand up. It's like, okay, when I move to New York, it's not going to be good anymore for a long time. Right. And so I know going back to the Bay is one thing, but I can't bring that same energy back to New York. Cause I've seen it, you know, like yeah. people in the Bay area will go move down to LA. It's like, all right, I've done everything I can in the Bay Area, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to be famous now. And then they come back and do all the stand-up shows in, in the Bay Area again because they couldn't get time in LA. And it just, it's that, you know, it's like they, they, they didn't properly have the, set their minds as like, it's going to be different, it's going to be hard and you can't hold on to what was good. You know, you have to kind of move on right. and accept that, you know, you have to look down the road and it's like, Believing yourself and like this is gonna get better because it's like I know what I'm capable of, and so when I go back to the Bay Area, it's like oh, that was nice, all right. That but like that has nothing to do yep. with what I'm doing out here. Yep, yep, yep. Other than you know practice and holding yourself. Oh and, yeah, of yeah. course. But uh, dude, I don't know. It's like, so my fault. I, I for imagine me. like you're probably doing a lot better in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> than, right. <laughs> Way well, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way better. But yeah. you know, I don't. Actually, and not just Iowa. Like I said, I was just in my hometown. Yeah. Uh, I just happened to be there because my sister got engaged. Yeah. And. First of all, my dad just surprised me. He's like, yo, I'm going to need you to do time. You know, I was yeah. like, oh, what? Uh, obviously, he meant more like just like a toast thing. But I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll make some jokes. He's like, oh, you're the big comedian now. Let's hear some jokes. I was like, oh, God damn. So like, I sat down. Why didn't you just ask me to show off my sneakers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I actually did go into that a little bit when I gave my little uh, spiel. But uh, but yeah, that was like maybe one of the best sets I've ever done. Yeah, but yeah. you have to put it in context, right? It's like everyone's at a wedding to yeah. have a good time. Everyone's family yeah. or friends. It's like you can't fuck this up. Yeah. Like, you can't even try to fuck this yeah. up. Yeah. And um, then you go, and then I, I just happen to, they happen to only do stand up the second week of every month. Mm -hmm. And that happened to be the second weekend, uh, second week of June. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to the guys up there that do some of the comedy shows. I'm like, yo, is there any shows? And I'm like, yeah, actually there is. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, go. Yeah. So I did actual shows. Uh, and by doing the first show, they were like, oh my God, man, you're great. We should have you on our show. And then yeah. they invite me to an additional show. I'm like, I'm feeling like the fucking man, you yeah. know? And then I get back here last night. And, or not last night, but like last night was my first uh, open mic since I left. And first of all, like I told you off there, I'm going from doing 15 minutes to now three. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, this is annoying. Like, <laughs> but think about like yeah. the growth, you know, like the, the first time he's like, do I even have three minutes to now? It's like, that's not even enough time for people to get to know me. Right, right, right. So that's the thrill. And then the, you know, down the challenge and yeah. the challenge, you know, but what was I going to say uh, about all that? Yeah. But like, uh, you understand that, you know, uh, you went from being a big fish in a relatively small pond and then now you're in 
uh, you could be a big fish, but you're in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. So well, I started in the ocean. I yeah. st- well, no, I mean, I technically started in Iowa, but as far as like where I really started to take stand up right. seriously was here. Yeah. So I understand what it takes to be funny. Yeah. And I know there's a long way to go to get there, yeah. but it's just funny. Cause a lot of these guys don't leave here yeah. until they get good. If right. they ever get good. Yeah. Whereas just the nature of my lifestyle currently, like I'm traveling to other places right. and happen to be able to do stand up there. Mm-hmm. And that's where the mind fuck comes in. Cause like this early in my stand up life, I shouldn't be getting the, not shouldn't, but like I, I shouldn't be exposed to these other opportunities because it really mind fucks you. Like, Oh dude, like they're laughing. Like this is clearly funny. Yeah. You just got to find a way to make it work here. Right. So it's, yeah, it's just that, that's what I mean by mind fuck. So, you know, I'm capable, I'm going to keep at it, you know, and it got, you know, many years to go, but it's just like, uh, it just gets annoying, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's basically the big thing. And I think the time is the biggest factor. Cause like, like you said, like you want to flesh things out, you want to get people to know you, you want to build things up, but I don't know the, the, the nice thing I guess is it really forces you to get funny because I saw a lot of unfunny acts up there where I'm just like, dude, why are people laughing at this? This is not good. And if you went through your whole life doing that and then came here, I, I imagine it would be kind of like your friends who went to LA or, and then, you know, yeah, have to come I mean, back. The thing about going home is that there's a comfort level and you understand the audience is a little bit better. Um, it's hard for me what I find out here right now in the first year is trying to reestablish myself or establish myself and, have people get to know who I am is I can't, uh, how do I say this? I can't do like newer jokes in front of like showcases. You know, uh, it's like, I have to do try to do your best stuff, my best stuff. I have to like show these comedians who have no idea who I am that I'm funny and you can't, for me, I can't risk, you know, doing more experimental things because it's like I'm not getting booked all that often, right, so right. I can't squander these right. opportunities. But when I go back to the Bay, it's like, you know, it's home. It's like, if I fuck up here, who cares? <laughs> I go back to New York. Yeah. Whereas if I fuck up here, it's like, God damn it, now right. I have to, it's like that boulder, it's just full. Yeah, yeah. A little bit no, yeah, I, I totally agree with you as far as showcases go, but yeah. I think the, the nice thing about the open mics here is that that's where I take the creative reign to be like, all right, let me yeah. try some new stuff. Cause even if I just get that little, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that's good enough for me. I'm like, yo, this shit is going to kill in Iowa. Yeah. Can't wait to use this when I get up there. Boom. But, uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll say this about open mics. Um, a shitty open mic in New York is a shitty mic anywhere else. Okay. So there's a sh- <laughs> there's shitty mics everywhere. So one thing that helped prepare me for New York is when, like I've been coming out to New York from the Bay Area like twice a year for the like the last three years before I moved because I wanted to like move here, get the lay of the land, right? Yep. So when I first visited out here, I was like, I'm gonna just do my A plus material in front of this crowd and show them what's up. And then it, it all died <laughs> at, at open mics, right? right, right. right? Uh, and then I got on showcases and it did well. I was like, Oof, it's not me. It's right. just, it's just the open mic. Right, right. So one thing that I do at open mics, like I'm not going to do material because right. yeah. it's like, why bother? Yeah. It's, it's going to die anyways. Yeah. So you got to just figure out uh, another purposeful. Yeah. Just get uh, creative. You know? Yeah. It's like, you got to make open mics more um, useful to you. Yeah, exactly, you exactly. Like if you're a brand new comedian, figure out jokes. If you're uh in it for a while, then use open mics as a networking opportunity. At the very least. Yeah, yeah. at the very least. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I don't know what yeah. the open <laughs> mic is. To be we'll honest. get back to you folks. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't know, free drink t- <laughs> 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 or running the open mic. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, or um, what are you, uh, barking for the open mic? Yeah, yeah, that'd be, actually that honestly may have some value in it just to get like regular people into an open mic. Cause that's the other thing, man. Like there's still just open mics out in Iowa. I haven't, I, I've done a couple books booked shows. Um, but to be honest with you, I can't even tell the difference because mm-hmm. the open mics get regular people yeah. and sometimes decent crowds, like, sure. like half filled, if not fully filled rooms. So yeah. it just, it feels like a showcase or a, you know, book spot or whatever. So that's, but that's kind of the point. Well, there's like, um, there's probably like one comedy club maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, two, yeah. two. Actually yeah. now there's one comedy club and then yeah. there's a, uh, bar well, that they use the downstairs. Yeah, like a really comedy. good bar show, yeah. maybe two or three like independent shows, right. but like there's one kind of big club then everything else is like, you know, how much comedy does Iowa get? New York's like, you can get it anytime, uh, anywhere. We just missed the other one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and there's another one. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, it, it's just that. 
Dope. All right, man. This was fun. Uh, I want you to plug your stuff again where we can find you. Okay. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at David Nguyen, N G U Y E N, and then uh, Instagram at The Bad Asian Show. Uh, you'll be seeing hashtags from him soon. Yeah. We promise. Uh, and then you have two Instagrams, though, right? One for your personal and one for the Bad yeah. Asians? Yeah. Okay. And then um, yeah, anything else? Any upcoming shows? Any showcases or. Uh, even base stuff you want to promote because i don't know exactly when this is going to go out hopefully within the week but we'll see no it's fine you can like if i have anything coming up you just follow it on the social media with hashtags with hashtags (laughs) yeah actually i didn't get to finish my thought with you i use this app i plug in just one word Mm -hmm. that's relevant to the thing it spits out 30 hashtags with a few like uh, periods mm-hmm. that space things out to push it to the bottom of your caption and they just go to the top of it and then start your caption mm-hmm. that way when you're done with your thought out caption then you just hit send and then you're good tight. So that would be my recommendation tight 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 yeah yeah all right man thanks for coming uh, and uh, thanks for having me we'll see you guys around peace <laughs>